Sorry about that. My uh, kids came up. My son and the grandbaby and uh, my granddaughter, everybody came up, so I'm a babysit. Anyway, I finished my KFC. <clears throat> I got this KFC from a different location, and to me, it didn't taste the same. You would think they all taste the same. It's all KFC. I don't know if they fried here with some different oil or what, but it wasn't. It, the skin didn't even look the same. Uh, but I was talking about Parkinson disease. I really just want to bring awareness to Parkinson disease, and that is not an old people disease, uh, because I just turned 53 in February. 53 on the sixth and the ninth. <laughs> I have two birthdays, and one day I'll explain how I end up with two birthdays. But my birthday was the 6th and the 9th. Mainly, I know my birthday as the 6th. Uh, <clears throat> but now since I moved here to Texas, and I had to send off for a birth certificate, it said the 9th. But I'll get more into that one day. But anyway, uh, so therefore, you know, I, I'm 53. And I was diagnosed with Parkinson's at, uh, you know, 51. It may have even been uh, 50 at the time, still 50. Might have been the year I turned 50. <clears throat> and um why you can't see me Kelly huh I don't know just talk arm. what about it it's like half of like this is how much is sore this one the main thing is my face yeah good anyway my little director is telling me to move my chair over some you know my grandbaby Catalina my granddaughter that be on the video with me She's trying to tell me how to do it so I can be in frame. Uh, but I was talking, I was just trying to bring awareness to Parkinson. You don't have to be old to get Parkinson. Uh, because I was 50, like I said, I think I was 50. I was still 50 when I was diagnosed. I really can't remember. I was 50 or 51 when I was diagnosed. And um, it was a surprise to me, but I wanted to. To get checked for it because of some symptoms I was having. I had went walking. I had walked about, I don't know, four miles one day. And uh, when I came back home and I went to pick up my water bottle. And my hand was like really jittering. Like shaking like this, I believe. I can't remember. It was really shaking. And I remember telling my kids, look at my arm. Look at my arm shaking like this. It was shaking. So anyway, I told my kids, look at my arm. I said, dang, I don't know why my arm's shaking like this. I know they were saying sometimes when they work out a lot and they strain their muscles that their muscles feel kind of jittery like that too when they pick up something. So I really kind of thought that's what it was. But I kept noticing little things about how my arm was or how, you know, that's just how, really it was just my arm and the tremor in my arm. I was having a difficult time typing. It's like, my fingers, you know, don't move as they used to when I'm trying to type. Like, even with this hand, if I'm doing this, uh, my left hand, it doesn't shake the same. It's, it's a weird flutter to it. Anyway, I went to the doctor, and um, I try not to mention that my father had Parkinson because I didn't want them to Put the two or two together. Let's assume that's what I had because that's what my father had. So I don't think I mentioned it right away. And um, so they sent me to this hospital uh, in the hospital district, Fort Worth, Texas. In the hospital district uh, to this hospital. I think it was uh, Harris Hospital. You don't want to do a video, right? Mm -hmm. Hush, please. Nah. Too short. <laughs> I think it was Harris Hospital. And I was there for six hours. I had to do this extensive testing where they had to inject this dye in me. And then I had to wait about an hour, I think. And then they run me through this machine. It was a big machine, like an MRI machine. And um, that was the full diagnosis for Parkinson. I got those results because the doctor, when I went and he was checking me out, he would do this to my arm. He had my hand and he would bend my arm up and extend it out <clears throat> and he didn't think I had Parkinson but then the second time I went back I don't know what made it different for him that day but he said it was like a rigidness when he 
extend my arm, it was a hesitation, like a rigidness. And um, that's why he sent me to the hospital to get that extensive test. You know, I've eaten my chicken a few minutes ago and I weighed some on my shirt. So I need to start wearing a bib. Make sure you rinse that out good. So anyway, I, um, they did that extensive testing. Like I said, I think it was about six hours. You rinse that out good? I think the testing lasts about six hours. So, okay. And, um, uh, anyway, they called, I don't know if they called me in or they sent me, I'm sure they called me in. Yeah, he called me in. He called me in. He called me in and he go over my results and he said that it was showed, uh, positive for, I think it said, I don't remember, I don't remember the wording, but it showed that I do have Parkinson's. And, um, uh, I was upset about it. I mean, 50, 50, 51 years old, diagnosed with a disease like Parkinson's. I didn't know what to expect. He gave me a lot of papers on it, a lot of information on it. I remember the um, first October after I was diagnosed, they, uh, I, at the doctor's office, there was a flyer about um, this girl determined to get in the computer and, I, and get in the camera, and I told her not to. So she determined to get in the camera. I didn't mean to. You didn't? Okay. Anyway, there was a flyer at the doctor's office uh, about a walk, a Parkinson walk. And um, I was trying to get people to support me and sponsor me, uh, you know, to do this walk. And I talked to quite a few people at my job. They said they were going to do it. The day the walk came, I didn't raise much money either. Uh, but I did raise a little money, and the day the walk came, it was one dear friend, Melissa, that showed up, and my see. daughter came, and my granddaughter came, and we did the walk, and it was awesome. It was like a four-mile walk, a five-mile walk. I forget. Five. I think it was a five-mile walk. Five. So anyway, we did the walk, and I want to start doing things more, you know, more frequent. I didn't do it last year, but I want to start doing more walks and participating, and just bringing more awareness to Parkinson's. And, um, you know, just aware that you can live a life, a normal life, you know, with the disease. Now, like, uh, uh, of course, I said mine was at an early stage. So come sit down. I'm good. Mine was diagnosed at an early stage. Okay, just sit down. You're good. I'm good. Mine was diagnosed at an early stage, you know, so I caught it early, and that's why they're trying to try me on different medication to help control it. But like I said, I, I used to type really well. Um, but since I was have been diagnosed and since I had the problem with the Parkinson's in my left arm, sometimes my fingers don't bend the way when I'm trying to type, they don't bend. Like they just don't bend. And I know in the one medication that caused the compulsive behavior, to me it controlled the Parkinson better and I was able to type a little faster. That was one good thing. You know, I was able to type a little faster. And uh, stress aggravates it. You know, I had a hard time in my job a couple of years ago. With a, well, around the same time I was diagnosed, I also was having problems with a boss at my job. Uh, I don't know. She seemed like she didn't like me for whatever reason. It was trying to trying to get me fired. Um, so that was stressing me out. So my neurologist actually uh, blessed their heart. They took me off work. Um, they put me on uh intermittent FMLA and took me off work to try me on some different medication to try to get it more controlled. So I really appreciate and thank them for that uh, because the boss, the way she was treating me, it was really stressing me out at work. And stress aggravates Parkinson's. And she knew that uh, because she had brought it to my attention when I first was diagnosed. Uh, she even cried with me and then we talked about it and she told me how stress could impact it. But I guess stress was, things were stressing her out at work. So she stressed me out at work. I don't know why, why I had to be in that category, but I was. So once the doctor took me off of work for one month and um, put me on the different medication, you can go right, go right there, make great, stop it. Put me on the different medication. I've been on, like I said, a Ritari. I've been on that for about a year. And um, like I said, my insurance don't cover it. Uh, and I'm out of pocket. I don't think they cover it. They do, they don't fully cover it. Mm -mm. And then my out-of-pocket expense is going to be, it was like $400 for 
you know, a month to get that medication. I can't afford $400 a month on the medication. So I'm working with the patient assistant program to try to get it paid for. They paid for it last year, so I'm trying to get it paid for again. But anyway, flippers and flippets, thank you for flipping into my flipping channel. Let me put my uh, flipper back in my mouth. <laughs> There you go, so I can give y'all a good smile. So thank you, flippers and flippets. And thank you for listening to me with my diagnosis of Parkinson. And um, we'll talk more about Parkinson um, probably on my next video. One thing I'm going to start adding to my video is story time. So this about Parkinson was just part of it. You know, I'm going to start here. I'm starting today with my story time. Thank you for listening, flippers and flippets. Flip out.